All right, so lesson 119, and you'll notice that it says combined with lesson 120. All right, lesson 119 is very simple, so I wanted to combine it with 120. If you look at 119.a, it says we use a scale to measure lengths. The numbers on an inch scale tell the number of inches the long marks are from the left end of the scale. There are 16 marks between inch marks. These marks are 1 16th of an inch apart. All right, and then it goes on to give you a little bit more information. If you look at your ruler, all right, now um, hopefully your ruler is divided into sixteenths. Okay, so the sixteenths here, this is referring to the spaces. Okay, so if you pick an inch and you count the spaces between there, you should find sixteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. And most rulers, um, they divide it into sixteenths, and then they have lines that are a little bit longer, dividing it into eighths. Then they have one line in the middle, dividing it in half, and you'll notice that's longer. And then the lines for the fourths are also slightly longer. So you have the short lines for the sixteenths, slightly longer lines for each eighth, slightly longer lines for fourths, and then a longer line for the half, and then of course the longest line marking the beginning and ending of the inch. So when you're measuring, you usually want to go to the nearest sixteenth of an inch, but you can reduce. For instance, if I put my point here and said, what line does this represent? You wouldn't say, well, four and eight sixteenths inches, you would say four and a half inches because eight over sixteen would reduce to one half. So whenever you can reduce a measurement, you should. All right, so you'll see that here in the book. Right here, it says one fourth even though you could count one, two, three, four, but that's four over 16th, which reduces to one fourth. So they show you all these different measurements. Some of them are reduced. This one is not because you can't reduce one over 16th, so, or nine over 16th. So when you're measuring, make sure that you are reducing when you can. Okay, so let's just pick one here. How far is arrow G from the left end of the scale? Okay, so you can come over and you can go one inch, two inch, three inch, four inches, and then here's the letter G, and there's one space after the four inch mark before you get to the arrow. So you've got four and one sixteenth of an inch. Four and one sixteenth inches. No reducing that. Okay, so if you go and look at example 119.2, it says use an inch scale to find the length of this line segment. Okay, so you just put your inch scale on the line. Make sure you're lining it up very precisely. All right. And you can count here. We go one, two, and then we're not quite to three. So we can just immediately go two and a half. We know that's eight sixteenths. And we can even go one, two, three fourths. All right, three fourths, that would be 12 sixteenths. So then we just add one more and we get 13 sixteenths. So we have two inches and 13 sixteenths. Okay, and you can see that right here, two and 13 sixteenths of an inch. Okay, the second part is about the metric scale. All right, if you look on the other side of your ruler, you should have centimeters and millimeters marked. Okay, so you should have one centimeter, two centimeter, three, and then you should also have tiny little millimeter lines in there. There should be 10 spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there are 10 millimeters in one centimeter. Okay, so if they were going to ask you how far is D from the left end of the scale, okay, you go to D, you can see you're at four centimeters, and then you can come to half, so that's going to be five out of ten, six, seven, so four, seven tenths, and they write it as a decimal, 4.7 centimeters. If you were counting in millimeters, you would have 10, 20, 30, 47, 47 millimeters. All right, so use a centimeter scale to measure the length of this line segment. Place your scale on the segment, okay? Make sure it's very precise. Your lines are exactly lined up. Okay, you can come over to five, one, two, three. So 53 millimeters, 5.3 centimeters. Okay, go ahead and do the practice on your own, A, B, C, D. All right, go ahead and do those, pause the video, and then I'll give you the answers and you can check your work. Make sure you're being very precise. All right, I'm assuming that you've gone ahead and done that. Here are the answers. Okay, for A, you should get 
two and three fourths inches, seven centimeters. Okay, right, for B, for A, you should get seven sixteenths. For B, you should get seven eighths, reduced. C, one and one fourth. D, one and one half. E, two and three eighths. And F, two and nine sixteenths. Okay, for C, for A, you should get six tenths. For B, you should get one and six tenths. For C, two and eight tenths. For D, four and seven tenths. And then for letter D, you should get two and seven sixteenths inches. For centimeters, you should get six and two tenths centimeters. Okay, so go ahead and if you didn't get it right, then just see what you did wrong. But let's go ahead and move on to lesson 120. Okay, lesson 120. Lesson 120 is over similar triangles. Okay, if you look in your book, it says if two triangles have the same angles, the triangles are similar triangles. We say that they are similar because they have the same shapes and look alike. So similar triangles are not the same as congruent. Congruent triangles have to have all of the same measurements, okay? Same side length, same angles. Um, they have to be completely the same. Similar triangles can be different sizes. They just have to have the same measurement of angles, okay? So we have two triangles here that are similar, okay? They each have a 90 degree angle, and then these angles are going to be the same measurement and these angles are going to be the same measurement. And that's indicated by, I have three here and three here, showing that these two are the same, two little lines here showing these are the same, and then one right angle line, well, corner, showing that these are the same. Okay, so these triangles are similar. Okay, similar triangles, um, these are related by um, scale factors. Okay, scale factors, will relate a corresponding side to another corresponding side. Corresponding sides are sides that are not necessarily the same measurement, but they are related, they are congruent, okay? So for instance, if you look at these two triangles, which side corresponds to this one here? Well, it's going to be this one, right? Because it's in the same position. Which side corresponds to this, this one here, and this one corresponds to this one, okay? So these sides are related by a scale factor. Now, a scale factor is a number that you use to multiply one side by, and then you'll get the other side. So you can have a scale factor going from this triangle to this triangle, or this triangle to this triangle. So if I asked you, what's the scale factor of the smaller, what scale factor would you use um, to get the measurement of the smaller side going to the larger side? All right, so to figure this out, you would do four, and you know if you multiply that by your scale factor, you're going to get eight. All right, four times what scale factor will get you eight? Well, two, we know that, okay? So our scale factor for this triangle is two, and that'll work the same for all of these. 8.5 times 2, that's going to get you 17. And 7.5 times 2, that's going to get you 15. So the scale factor from the smaller triangle to the larger triangle is 2. What if I asked you what's the scale factor from the larger triangle to the smaller triangle? You know, 8 times your scale factor is going to get you 4. All right, well, 8 times what is 4? Well, you can get your scale factor alone. Your scale factor will be equal to 4 eighths or 1 half. Okay, so to go from the larger to the smaller, you can use a scale factor of 1 half or 0.5. Okay, so for instance, 8 times 1 half, your scale factor is going to get you 4. Okay, 15 times 1 half, okay, well, 15 over 2, that's going to equal 7.5. Okay, so you can find a scale factor going from your smaller to your larger or from your larger to your smaller. And you can use your scale factors to figure out missing, seg missing segment lengths. All right, so example 120.1 says, 
find x and y. All right, we have all the lengths of this triangle, 2, 4, 5. But we only have one here, 3, but that's all we need. All right, because we can see that these triangles are similar. Their angles correspond and their sides will correspond. So all we have to do is figure out 2 times what scale factor gets us 3. So you can make your equation 2 times what scale factor equals 3. Okay, you can divide both sides by 2 and get your scale factor alone. Now you can leave it as 3 over 2 or you can actually do the division and you can get a decimal here, 1.5. Okay, and then knowing your scale factor, now you can use it. Okay, 4 times 1.5 will get us x. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 1 is 4 plus 2 is 6. So x will be equal to 6. And we know 5 times the scale factor will get us y. Okay, so 1.5 times 5, 25. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 2 is 7. Okay, so y will be equal to 7.5. All right, so you just use your scale factor. You multiply one side by it to get the other side. So many times you have to figure out what the scale factor is first. Then use your scale factor to figure out your missing sides. Okay, go ahead and do the practice problem. See if you can get the right answer. All right, so hopefully you did this. For M, all right, for M, you should get 5.6, and for P, you should get 7.2. Or uh, maybe you did it fractionally, so M would be 28 over 5, and P would be 36 over 5. Okay. Oh, actually, no, those should be switched. My bad. M should be the longer one. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this in case you didn't get it correct. Okay, so you can look at this and you know that 5 and 4 are corresponding sides. Okay, so 5 times what is going to equal 4? We're looking for a scale factor. We can divide both sides by 5, 4 divided by 5, okay, that's going to be 8 tenths, so our scale factor is 8 tenths, so then all we have to do is 9 times our scale factor and 7 times our scale factor, so 0. 0.8 times 9 is going to be 7.2, and then 0. 0.8 times 7 will be 5.2. All right, there you have it, 119 and 120.